Hey guys, I'm Komai, this is Star and Select, and today I'm asking what exactly is the point in Amiibo? What do video games and toys have in common? Well, a couple things. You play both of them, they uh, increase your imagination and dexterity skills, and if you brought one of them to a 21st birthday party, you might have walked into the wrong house. But what happens when you combine the two? Well, you get Skylander Spyro Adventure. But but after that, you get Disney Infinity. But no, no, what's the one that's coming out? The Lego Dimensions. No, no, the Nintendo one. The, the Amiibo, the Amiibo. The ones that they'll make for Smash Brothers, but then they'll make them for everything else. And just this whole toys to life thing, I mean, are they the same or are they different? I mean, I think you just got to ask yourself, why would you buy a toy that works with a video game? Right, maybe you want to see Mr. Incredible hanging out of Sully, or you want to shoot some lasers and smash some bad guys, or maybe you want to do something totally normal, you know, like uh, get Batman and Gandalf or someone Homer Simpson on a wrecking ball. Or maybe you just want to collect all the tiny models that you can, like a store day at London Fashion Week. But do you still want to pay the 30 plus pounds or the 50 plus dollars for the game, plus the extra for the toys? I mean, you do tend to get starter packs, but Amiibos are standalone purchases, but does the same mentality apply across the board? I don't think so. You see, Skylanders, Disney Infinity and LEGO Dimensions focus on the characters coming out of the toys, through the portal and into the game, with that character bringing their different abilities, moves and associated levels. Amiibo, however, offer a range of small bonuses over different Nintendo games. This means that Amiibo's value is more spread out than the others, so the £12 you spend on a Bowser Amiibo is exactly the same as the $14 you spend on a Baymax toy. And any economist will tell you that no matter how you look at it, that conversion rate kinda sucks. So aren't Amiibo worth it? I mean, there are really good games in a Steam sale that you can get for under a 5 that you'd enjoy for way longer than you would a Donkey Kong Color Yoshi. I think you look at it in two different ways. You can focus on the game, or you can focus on the amiibo. Let's look at Smash Bros, for example. On Smash Bros Wii U and 3DS, using an amiibo is zapping a figure player of that character there to fight with you or against you like Arnold Schwarzenegger in the Terminator films. And like Arnie, they can learn, adapt their fighting techniques, and try to murder children. In the game, of course. Even though supply hasn't quite met demand right now, Nintendo are currently selling and manufacturing Amiibo for Smash Bros entire 50 plus character roster, including DLC and third party characters. Which by the way, in the case of Sonic, Mega Man, Pac-Man and Ryu, who is getting the money for that? Now if you're looking to up your Smash game with some AI killing perfect pivot back aerials into the stage spike after alleged Trump, you're not going to find much fun with Amiibo fires. I mean, apart from the occasional epic moment, you largely get the same experience you would play in a CPU set to level 7. In America, A, if you use an Amiibo, you'll get a costume for your Mii Racer, so you can wear a 1D in a crash show, but you know, like, totally sane people do all the time. Or let's say you want to get Hario Warriors. If you use an Amiibo from the Zelda series, you can unlock high level weapons, while all the other Amiibo will get you rupees and materials. So on and so forth. Small boosts, nice extras, but why would you pay 12 quid for some digital dungarees or a piece of monster tooth? I mean, it doesn't really seem that worth it. Okay, so why don't we not look at the value brought to the game, but rather the individual value of the Amiibo itself? Let's take Nintendo's main gun, Mario, for example. If you have a Mario Amiibo, you can, like I mentioned previously, have a Mario figure player smashing it up in Wii U and 3DS and get a Mario themed outfit in Mario Kart 8, as well as an extra item a day in Horror Warriors. You can also get an extra life or two in Toad's Treasure Tracker, an extra accessory in Girls Mode 3, a themed board in Mario Party 10, dress up one of the cast of One Piece Super Grand Battle X, get a skin for your fighter J and Ace Combat Assault Horizon Legacy, one of those unnecessarily long video game tiles as well, like Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo HD Remix. I mean, what the hell is up with that? A themed Yoshi color scheme in Woolly World, a free demo of a classic from Nintendo's greatest hits, and if you can get your hands on one of those 30th anniversary amiibo, you can really big up your game as Super Mario Maker. Right, that's a lot more worth it for 12 bucks, and if this Toys to Life thing isn't just a passing craze, then with each new game that comes out, its compatible amiibo's value increases, offering you a new gameplay experience, albeit kinda small, each time. And in the end, there is always eBay. There's also an ethical argument with the Toys to Life model that DLC have had to tackle in recent years. This is probably worth a whole other video in itself, but in short, the content that the toys unlock needs to hit a certain sweet spot. When you use a figure, it needs to look good, the player needs to feel powerful, and the impact needs to feel substantial. But the catch only two of that is the content can't be so overpowered that the game becomes easy, or be so substantial to the experience that those without the toy can still access the full game. And then you have multiplayer games, and then you start entering play to win territory, and then everyone gets mad, and then someone flips one table, and now I'm not allowed to play RuneScape anymore. As long as the content isn't something flippant like a piece of armor or a bunch of extra lives, you can charge what you want for the playsets. We'll pay for it if it's good enough. Skylanders, Disney Infinity, and LEGO Dimensions have good, substantial, and optional character content with all of the unique abilities and special attacks. 
but without throwing more money at it, you'll only really see up to half the game. But Codename Steam is a good example of being able to play a full game with the option of adding Marth, Lucina, Ike or Robin to your party for a crossover that makes zero sense. But, you know, I'm sure there's some intelligence system out there deciding these things. Thanks to at Mordy Clays and me, we can put Ability Guide in release recently. It's a good thing someone's keeping track of these things. And if you guys have any opinions, whether you agree or disagree on Amiibo or Toys to Life, I'd love to hear it in the comments below. But until next time, I've been Koma, that's your keyboard, this is Stan Select, thank you and good night.